America's failing public education system has also taken a huge financial hit with billions of dollars to educate the illegal migrant children who have crossed into our country over the past four years. Well, now that parents are fed up and have voted for change, several sanctuary cities and states are vowing to fight any new legislation to deport illegal migrant families. Joining us now to discuss this is guest faculty at the Leadership Institute School Board Programs and CEO of Optima Ed, Erica Donalds. Good morning to you, Erica. Always great to see you. Good morning. School leaders in Chicago, Colorado, and California have all vowed to oppose deportation efforts of the second Trump administration. Tell us how this influx of migrant children has had a detrimental effect to classrooms really across the country. You know, it's hard to believe that school leaders would oppose this effort of keeping these families together as their uh, families are repatriated to their home countries uh, because the influx of migrants has put an unmanageable strain on our education system. As a former school board member, I can tell you our system is already strained of funds uh, meeting the needs of students who are coming in with uh, challenges like who do not speak English as their first language, who are behind academically. And the pandemic only exacerbated those issues. And we're really putting the onus on our teachers to manage students coming in new all the time and month after month, new students and having to manage their differing uh, academic abilities. And we really don't have the funds to do it. It's affecting the ability to serve the needs of American students. Yeah, and it's really put unprecedented pressure, as you said, on our public education system. And we fail to account for what this also does when we're also tracking tracking statistics when it comes to testing. What are some of the stats across the country when it comes to our failing education system? Well, unfortunately, they are abysmal. Uh, as you know, the NAEP scores recently came out that showed only about a third of our fourth and eighth grade students are reading on grade level. And we witnessed the largest drop in math scores in those two grade levels in recorded history. Now we are really falling behind when it comes to the, the global competition of academic performance. And this is not helping matters at all. You look at a place like Baltimore where 40% of the high schools have exactly zero students who are performing on grade level, who can read proficiently according to the NAEP and according to scores. And then states like Massachusetts that are actually removing their high school exam. So we don't even know how those students are gonna perform. Yeah, and we have these packed classrooms right now, a lot of non-English speaking students. I was talking to a, a mom whose children speak both English and Spanish, and she said her six-year-old son was acting as an interpreter for migrant kids in his class who had just arrived in this country because none of the teachers spoke Spanish. This has been a huge problem with a lot of our schools right now. What other impacts is this having? Well, and you're not just seeing that there, and, and you feel so sorry for not just the students who are affected by this, but the teachers as well, because inevitably their attention is diverted to these new students that are coming in that are most of the time very far behind, not just speaking Spanish as a second language, but many other languages that are coming over our borders. And so it's inevitable that our students that are there, that are performing on grade level, they are the ones who are going to suffer. And not only that, just as you gave the example, they're having to take their class time when they should be learning and they should be growing to help other students along. Uh, the teachers do not have the resources or the bandwidth to meet the needs of all of the Native and the American students and also the immigrants that are coming in nonstop. It's hurting everyone. It serves, it serves no good purpose for some of these uh, teachers right now either. As you said, they're incredibly frustrated. It's not just the American kids, it's the migrant kids also who are incredibly frustrated. How much is this costing the American taxpayer? Well, untold amounts and in multiple ways. If you think about the number of families that have come over the border, if a third of the three million or so, it's hard to know how many. Just this are, one year alone is what you're talking about, this one year. Yeah, talking about this year, three million. Right. Um, if a million of them are students in our public school system and, and you know, $10,000 a piece, you know, you're talking about a billions of dollars that isn't there. It's not like we're pouring more money into the education system. Right. As a former school board member, I can tell you our budget is fixed. So it's actually just diverting those funds away from students who need those funds to get caught up after a pandemic and to make sure that we are reading on grade level. We're talking about added social services, uh, cities like Boston adding multiple social services, people who are meeting the needs of, of special needs students that are coming in as well. And so the funds are not just 
additional funds costing the taxpayer, but it costs the taxpayers because they're paying these monies for their children and grandchildren to be educated. And those funds are being diverted for additional services for migrant students who need more help than, than what we're able to provide as a system. All right, guest faculty at the Leadership Institute School Board Programs and CEO of Optima Ed, Erica Donalds. Always great to see you. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Of course.